Good morning, and thanks for, for joining us today on this uh, beautiful day here in Boston, where uh, it's, uh, if you believe what they say about Philadelphia, it's always sunny, but uh, let's not believe that here. Thanks for joining me. I am going to be joined today with uh, Alan Tate, the executive uh, chair of the MIT Sloan CIO Symposium and the inaugural chair of the Digital Learning Series. So we're going to have a conversation today, last about uh, 20 minutes, half an hour or so, just to talk about the Digital Learning Series, about the AI uh, organization, uh, post-pandemic organization, and talk about what's coming up and some feedback. And because this is an experiment, um, we would love to hear from you all what you like and what you don't like. So without uh, further ado, let me introduce Alan Tate, the Executive Chair of the MIT Sloan CS Symposium. How are you doing today, Alan? Good. How are you, Christopher? Excellent, excellent. I actually am going to where, if you believe Danny DeVito, it is always sunny, namely Philadelphia, right after this uh, broadcast. So hopefully it will be a little bit sunnier there. So, Well, it's not sunny here, but uh, uh, we can pretend. <laughs> That's true, although the lawn is looking a lot better. So, so thanks for joining me today. Uh, so uh, let's see, what do we want to cover today? The um, How about we talk about the digital learning series uh, in, in general? How, how's it going and what do you have planned for the rest of the uh, the series? Well, let me start by saying I'm glad that we have episode one on, under our belt. <laughs> That's always the hardest, right? Yeah, that, that was the hardest. The whole pivot from going from an in-person symposium and then getting everything together to get the digital learning series started. Um, but but now we have uh, a lot of plans in place. So we have the webinar set up from June to October. Um, I think we've done a lot of work getting our process set up, uh, working with Jiro Studio, and we also have somebody working on the, the audio. Um, so we're publishing the recordings. I think that they're coming out very well. Uh, and honestly, I was very pleased with episode one. Um, we had 550 people register, which I think was excellent. And it's just for the audience at, at the uh, symposium, we might have roughly 900 or a little bit more than that. So I think that was a pretty good start. And a little uh, a little trivia is that you uh, had to, you requested that MIT uh, increase our license from uh, 500 to 1,000, which is quite a feather. And they did. Uh, and uh, so, you know, the uh, MIT Sloan Alumni Relations uh, has become a partner for us. They're uh, providing the Slip Zoom platform so that we can host these webinars. Uh, they seem pretty happy. Um, that oh, just on good. that, actually, I forgot to mention uh, earlier that if people want to uh, to join us, uh, and if you're not familiar with Zoom, at the bottom of your screen, you should see a few buttons. One in particular um, will give you the, the controls to both mute your audio and unmute your audio and video. Um, as well as raise your hand in the Q&A section. So um, have a look down there and if uh, we'll, we'll see how many questions we get and we'll get to them if we can. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so just getting back to episode one, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, play these episodes each month uh, and continue to get audience feedback. That's what these updates are about. So you and I have an opportunity to talk to the audience. So. Um, we do have surveys at the end of each episode and also at the end of this update. So I'll just give you a couple of statistics. So for episode one, 87% of the attendees, at least those that took the survey, were either satisfied or very satisfied with the content. 91% um, were either satisfied or very satisfied with uh, the Zoom platform. So Great. Um, I, I, I think it's... I think it's coming together. And now uh, we have uh, a webinar schedule for July, August, September, October. Um, they're going to evolve a little bit in their format. So Ju July will be similar to June in terms of having a presentation at the beginning and then a panel. Um, August and September, we're actually going to have two panels back to back. And then in October, uh, we'll have two panels, and then actually at your suggestion, um, we're going to add a fireside chat at the end. Um, we have a gentleman named Guy Snodgrass who wrote a wonderful book on leadership, uh, 10 Points of Leadership from the Cockpit. He's a, um, um, a Top Gun instructor as well as an MIT alum. I'm going to interview him, and I'm really looking forward to that. 
uh, just to talk about leadership in general. So yeah, you know, one of the things I really loved about the uh, in-person uh, CIO symposium was the the final uh, bit of energy that Andy McAfee lent to the audience. Uh, just after a really long day, Andy came out and gave one of his just excellent talks, which I thought would be nice to do the same thing after this series. So I'm really looking forward to that. And the other was uh, just a plug for our sister event, the MIT um, Sloan CFO Summit, which is normally in November. So that's MITCFO.com. The, they had a really inspirational speaker at the beginning of their session who, who had nothing to do with, with chief financial officers, uh, but really was sort of a leadership lesson. And I really thought um, that the same thing. I think I'm looking forward to... Uh, the talk in October with uh, Mr. Snodgrass. Yeah, so I did go to the CFO Summit uh, last fall, and I remember that speaker, and I really enjoyed his talk. And I and I did uh, have a Zoom call with Guy. He said, you know, I really enjoyed talking to him, and I think everybody's going to enjoy what he has to say. So um, I think it's going to be a nice, nice addition to the digital learning series. So if any of our listeners haven't had a chance to, to listen to the uh, – the AI uh, podcast or broadcast um, webinar from a couple of weeks ago. I, I encourage you to to listen to it. There were some really interesting points in there. I don't know what what uh, did you what were your takeaways from that conversation? I thought I think Tom and the team did a really good job. Yeah, I, I had a few. I mean, I think that the thing that that really struck me about it was sort of the overall arc of the conversation. So you know, in the beginning, Tom Davenport talked about AI and he was bringing up some statistics. Uh, from surveys that he had run. Like, so for example, there was a lot of focus on AI being used uh, for improvements in productivity. Uh, he quoted Deloitte saying, I think, you know, 63% of the respondents would want to use AI uh, to try to automate jobs. It got back to the jobs discussion. But what was interesting for me is as the went into the panel and as they started bringing into the panels, the, the, the focus shifted from productivity to actual value creation. So how do we use AI to bring value to the customers? And that seemed to be the real sweet spot. And so it didn't so much depend on the, you know, the algorithms and the data and all the complexity and getting the mathematicians in to make the algorithms. It's really a matter of thinking about your business, uh, identifying the use cases, and then um, uh, coming up with, um, you know, a solution that used AI to bring value to the customers. And some of the things were like, you know, fraud detection, um, you know, product recommendations, um, predicting when ATMs run out of cash, you know, all these things make people's lives easier. And more, uh, more, more secure, which we'll talk about uh, in cybersecurity in, in the next panel. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we've all experienced where you've used your credit card and within a couple of seconds or even minutes, you get a call saying this card was used, you authorize it, and then the transaction goes through, which is sort of an unfathomable uh, sequence of events to, to imagine without the combination of big data, obviously our, our communications networks, but also AI bringing it all together to, to, to make a decision on the fly that a human would take, you know, it, even minutes is probably too late to be practical. So I really, yeah. yeah one of the other t- takeaways that I got was um, in the, uh, in, and I'll, I'll give a, a timestamp on this because I think it's, you know, people want to flip right through it about 13 minutes into the, uh, into the talk. You now we talked about the, the past to AI, which was like re-engineering processes, which you talked about. So that's the, he had ROAI, which I thought was. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. ROAI. Yeah, and then you know, our organizational culture needing to um, to be really, be, you know, senior leadership to be really being the driver in it because there's a lot. There is a bit of there, anything that's unknown. Uh, people are, are risk averse, and so you have to create a culture where you can uh, take a risk. I, I remember the story of um, Jeff Bezos and the Fire Phone, uh, which was you know by kind of economic metrics uh, a failure, right? Uh, but he made sure that the person who uh, did the work didn't didn't when they pulled it from their product line didn't see it as a failure. In fact, as we all know, apocryphally, uh, and but probably true, is that the um, the uh, Amazon, the Echoes, and the Dots, and all those products that we now use really came out of the insights uh, beyond the, the initial push. So I think those are the kind of things. And so then you also have the algorithms, and you know you really need the the algorithms and the data to be unbiased. Uh, and that, you know, that's that's tough to do because, you know, we have to both look at ourselves for any kind of 
uh, biases that we don't even know we have, but also have diversity in the teams to, to pull those out before they cause issues. You know, we've, we've seen all sorts of issues with facial recognition um, and, you know, having sort of racial biases in there. So that's something to be thought about. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, so they did talk about facial recognition. I've, and, um, you know, one of the things that Tom brought up is he, he mentioned this podcast, um, which, by the way, is Lex Friedman's artificial intelligence podcast. He didn't mention that on the webinar, but I asked Tom because I, I recognized what he was talking about. Lex Friedman worked at the age lab at MIT and works on autonomous vehicles. And so with respect to facial recognition, I guess Lex had said that, you know, when you get into a self-driving car, you basically want the car to recognize you and to give you that, again, that positive customer experience. And so it all depends on the use case. I mean, that's a, that's a very positive use of that technology. And of course, we all know there are a lot of ways that the technology can be used for uh, negative or, or bad purposes. And, right. uh, and I was really pleased that they brought up the ethics because, um, you know, we, we build these technologies and we all don't always have the foresight to know exactly what the consequences are going to be. And AI in particular, I think is an extremely exciting, but also very powerful technology. So I was pleased to see them talk about that. Yeah, they did talk about it at the 17 minute mark. They talked about, you know, sort of uh, an overall view of, you know, think big, and keep pressing forward, even in this kind of uncertain time when people are forced to work in completely new and different ways, mostly remotely, uh, but also, you know, thinking about how, how um, that gives you an opportunity to, to, in some ways, have some, I wouldn't say downtime as much as the ability to focus on, on some of the bigger problems that are in there. Um, and, you know, I, I forget, it, I think it was Lefebvre, one of the speakers who said the answers are in the data. So having a really good wide net of the data, I think is really key for making AI useful. Yeah, I think it was Moshan that, that made that point. And um, yeah, so, you know, one of the things that Tom said also was, uh, you know, too many pilots. Do you remember that? That was yeah. around the same time when he was, you know, on the ROAI. Yeah, when he was talking about the transition from pilot to production, that was a difficult transition. Yeah, and he was talking about how people really needed to plan for production in the beginning. You know, if you're going to do a machine learning algorithm, we've been doing that for years and years and years. And so you don't need uh, to, you know, start small. But, you know, the thing that I was thinking when he was saying that is, you know, this is a very complicated technology. And I mean, we live in a world now where anybody can go and, and, you know, get on one of these platforms that's available, freely available, by the way, you know, create uh, an AI algorithm just to educate yourself. I know I've done it, and I'm sure that many people watching this webinar have done it. And, you know, you get an appreciation for the tedium to go in and clean the data to get ready for the algorithm to do anything. Right. And then, you know, as you struggle, to get the algorithm to have a positive result, you know, you get an appreciation in a very small way because, you know, I'm not an expert and I'm, you know, most people who experiment aren't experts, but, but you get a little bit of appreciation of how hard it is to solve some of these problems. And so I, I, I could see too why Tom was saying, you know, think big, but, you know, pick uh, your, your targets as uh, very achievable little nuggets that you can do. So it was yeah. a great conversation. Yeah, so I encourage people to go to, to go listen to that. Hopefully um, many of our attendees here today have, but if not, if you go to MITCIO.com and in the agenda page, you can see a link directly to it. So what was the, um, you said the audience response was 87% um, positive, was it 91%? Run, run those numbers by us again. Yeah, so 87% uh, of the respondents uh, were positive about the conversation, uh, either satisfied or very satisfied, and 91% were uh, either satisfied or very satisfied with respect to the Zoom platform. You know, the other thing that maybe we should talk about is, uh, you know, we put these surveys out and we've been reading the surveys and trying to see what the audience is interested in with respect to um, you know, how to grow or change or modify the digital learning series. I, I just want to bring up a couple of points that the audience raised. Um, and, and by the way, some of the 
people who, who gave these comments may not have been part of that 87%. They may have been, you know, more critical, but that's okay because at least they were taking the time to explain what it was that, you know, they would like to see. So one fella um, suggested that maybe we do case studies rather than, you know, conversations that are, you know, more general like we did. And, and I thought that might be a good idea to really go into a specific application of, say, AI and talk about, um, you know, how they went from concept to implementation, kind of to highlight um, what Tom was saying about really planning for production. And, and I could see that. Um, another another uh, person commented that they'd like to see industry-specific sessions, which, which, so logistically, that might be a little bit of a challenge in terms of getting speakers who are all in the, the same industry, um, you know, it, it, to, to I, I haven't actually tried to do it, but I'm just thinking ahead. I mean, I think it's a great idea. And, um, and, I, and the bottom line is I actually appreciate getting these kinds of comments from the audience um, because it does get us thinking. Uh, and we do read them and we, we definitely will try to respond. Some things are easier than others. But anyway, we did get some really good and productive comments out of it too. So actually, just to pause you there for a moment, um, I, I just we got a, a, Q a Q&A about um, your audio, you, people not hearing your audio, just hearing me, which must be a very bizarre experience for them. Um, I'd be curious to know if anybody else is having that problem. Let, let us know in the Q&A and we'll sort that out. But um, I'm hearing it at this end and, and uh, I guess worst case, we'll have it ready <laughs> for the podcast now. So yeah. keep it fascinating. I think actually just on that last point that you raised about um, the... The, the feedback from the audience, and I'd love to hear more from from audience now <clears throat> or later, uh, and we'll have our our links up later on. So um, great, thanks, Pat. Hearing both of you, great. The um, talk about 2021 and the CIO symposium, and then I want to talk about the uh, the next panel that's coming up. But <clears throat> we were talking about a hybrid approach to to this event, um, and I, and I would love to hear from people whether it's today or or, or elsewhere. Uh, as we go through this, you know, what they like about what we're doing, <clears throat> not necessarily specifically this session, although we'd love to hear feedback on that, but generally on putting together the panels. And then when you're listening to the panels and after the fact, when you get to watch them, you know, are there areas where we, we can do better? And I think that's really the question that I'm asking is what can we do better so that we can give you a better uh, experience? So, um, so tell us about what you're thinking about 2021 and uh, a hybrid yeah, well, so actually for 2021, I would say that all the options are on the table. So first of all, you know, when we complete the digital learning series in October, it's going to be all hands on deck to get uh, the symposium in May. You know, that was the event that we started with, and now we have enough time to really plan it properly. Um, so the range of what it could be would be all in person, which... I'm fairly skeptical of being able to do that, to be honest with you. Um, at one end, doing an all virtual event uh, at the other extreme and then doing some kind of a hybrid in the middle. So um, I, I guess I would say that for the symposium, you know, we're thinking about a format that more reflects the symposium rather than you know, the digital learning series is, is one webinar every month. Um, if if we're going to do a hybrid or a virtual event, we would really want it to be within, say, a week and have more of the flavor of the symposium. So, and more um, immersive, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. You and I were talking about, uh, you know, social distancing. I did do the calculation on the football field. For oh, those. I want to hear about that. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 it, so it turns out. <laughs> so, so it turns out. It. For those who don't live around here, we have something called open town meetings. And so a lot of towns are holding these town meetings on their local football fields. And Christopher and I were asking ourselves, you know, how many people could he get with social distancing? Well, you know, six feet apart isn't enough because you have to allow for people to intermingle as they come on and off, right? So the density can't be as great. Um, I figured that if I packed people as densely as as safety would 
would require, you're talking about maybe 775 people on a, on a football field. And I think that North yeah, Dando, they, their density was less than that. If you look at the pictures, they don't even have that many. So uh, that, that was an aggressive number and it doesn't uh, come out. So a hybrid event may be something where we have a smaller number of people. And here I'm talking about 100 or maybe 150 based upon my conversations with MIT. So just to say, I mean, I'm in conversations with the Sheridan. I'm in conversations with MIT. Everybody is thinking about what can be done. I'm getting information about, you know, what is the government saying in terms of safe um, density and the different rooms that we may use. Um, I'm also in conversations with Jiro Studio about, you know, options to live stream the event. Um, so I guess this is a long way of saying that I don't know exactly what the symposium is going to look like in 2021, except that we are actively thinking through all the options and talking to all the stakeholders um, now that we have the digital learning series in place. Yeah, it's been quite a pivot. And if, and if any of our attendees have any experiences out there with other whether rem- webinars or, or virtual conferences that they really thought were, were different and great, let us know because we'd love to, uh, we'd love to keep, keep improving. So let's talk about our, our, our next um, uh, webinar, which is on July 15th. Again, if you go to MITCIO.com, you can register there under the register page or the agenda page. So um, we're going to have Kerry Pearlson, Executive Director of the MIT Cybersecurity uh, at MIT Sloan, moderate a panel with uh, a couple of great speakers. Uh, So Danny Allen from Chief Technical Officer at uh, VM, uh, Katie Jenkins, Senior VP uh, and Chief Information Security Officer at Liberty Mutual Insurance. Uh, And finally, my favorite, I think, is uh, Andrew Stanley, Chief Information Security Officer at at Mars. And I'm sure he'll be particularly sweet. But um, Yeah, uh, so Andrew Stanley was a prior speaker at the symposium uh, and maybe Katie Jenkins as well. Um, of course, Carrie Pearlson was also a prior speaker. So these are all MIT symposium, or most of them are MIT symposium alum. I don't, I don't think this may be the first time for Danny Allen. Um, and that, in the uh, in the shameless plug department, um, I did a, a podcast with uh, Carrie a couple months ago. If you Google Sloney's talking with Sloney's, you'll find what her podcast in there, and she had a really interesting conversation. Uh, about cybersecurity and what MIT Sloan, the, the center, is doing. So, Yeah, well, and I would endorse that conversation. I did listen to that podcast, and it's very good. And, and I think it really highlights, you know, Terry is just a genuinely uh, nice individual. And I, I have to say that she has been great to work with as a moderator and in terms of planning the session, but she's also taken time out of her day to talk to me about the digital learning series and give me her input on how we can make it better, how we can make it more attractive to speakers. I mean, one of the things when you're trying to create an event like this is you have, you know, speakers and moderators and sponsors and volunteers and different people, the audience members who have a, a an oar in the water and you have to find out, you know, figure out how to bring value to each of these different stakeholders and carry in particular had a lot of good ideas, which I really appreciate. So uh, she's been great to work with. Um, I think that your your podcast is probably a nice little uh, preview. Um, Carrie does a lot of work with different companies on cybersecurity. And I really like how she takes the cybersecurity conversation um, and doesn't go overboard with the whole technical aspect of it, but really focuses on the human side of cybersecurity, really viewing it as a human problem. And especially in the age of COVID-19, um, there's a lot of bad actors out there trying to take advantage of people. You know, you have people who are out of work or maybe they have to work at home and now they have to connect into their uh, company and, and get access to secure assets and how do they do that safely. That's incredible. I mean, I think if, if you know, you know any chief information officer or technology leader at an organization is probably, uh, wow, what a challenge going from March to here. All of a sudden, you do all you can to lock down your organization, even if you have many cloud-based applications and whatnot. All of a sudden, everyone is now distributed all around the, the country and the world. It's, it's quite a challenge. And we've seen many articles about um, bad actors, as you say, taking advantage of people's less secure home situations as a way of 
getting a backdoor into organizations. Yeah. And, and you know, to take a, a page out of your podcast, the bad actors are not the 200 pound guy sitting in his bedroom. These are well-funded, very sophisticated people who are, you know, trying to take advantage of the system. They have a business model just like everybody else. So um, I, I'm totally excited to hear what Carrie and these panelists have to say in July. I think it's going to be a great podcast and I, I do hope people sign up for that. Uh, it's an extremely interesting topic. Absolutely. I, um, and I, you know, as we're coming toward the end of this, uh, this conversation here, um, you know, I, I want to emphasize, you know, this is a, a work in progress. It's a lot of fun to do it, actually, and work with you, Alan, and the team on pivoting from an in-person to a, to a virtual event. And I think you've done a great job of lining up a, a really interesting set of conversations. So I'll just kind of go through what's coming up. We talked now about keeping your organization's cyber secure in the COVID-19 environment. How secure are we? That's in July. In August, uh, the post-pandemic workplace and customer experience. That's yeah. uh, And then the post-pandemic enterprise. Um, and we'll hopefully we'll be in post-pandemic by the time this one comes around in September. I'm not sure about that, but um, continuing digital transformation conversations which, with George Westerman leading that one. Uh, and you've got your, uh, you've talked about the, the fireside chat in October, plus there's one more panel which you're working on in there. Uh, so I think it's going to be a great lineup. And, and I, uh, and I'd love to again hear from from our listeners. You know, I, I love the the kind of the pace of an hour, an hour and a half, uh, once a month, so that you can put it on your calendar and 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 not have it overwhelm your calendar at the same time. So, correct. Yeah. Well, that's that's the style of, of the digital learning series. Of course, the symposium will be a little bit different in 2021 as we continue to experiment. Um, but yeah, I, I agree with you that I think the more feedback we can get from our target audience, I mean, we are listening. I, um, we want to know what you think and, um, we're open to doing new things. Absolutely. Well, thanks very much, Alan Tate, the uh, executive chair of the MIT Sloan CIO Symposium and inaugural chair of the uh, of the digital learning series. My name is Christopher Reichert. I'm the treasurer of the MIT Sloan Boston Alumni Association. And um, we have a bunch of social media links uh, where you can connect with us, whether it's on the website or Facebook um, or our LinkedIn uh, group as well. Um, and email us at info at MITCO.com if you have any questions, comments. And of course, I want to thank our sponsors, without whom none of this would be possible. So, and thank you all for joining us today for this conversation. We look forward to seeing you at future webinars uh, and hopefully in person very soon. So stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.